Proszę Państwa, Stowarzyszenie Architektury Krajobrazu zrzesza nie tylko architektów krajobrazu, ale także w naszych szeregach są wykonawcy terenów zieleni. Dlatego pozwoliliśmy sobie zaprosić na dzisiejsze spotkanie naszego kolejnego gościa, który jest szefem dużej firmy wykonawczej. Będzie to prezentacja ciekawa zarówno dla architektów krajobrazu, jak i wykonawców terenów zieleni. Ula przedstawi nam kolejnego gościa. Następnym prelegentem naszej konferencji jest pan Benjamin Künsters. You are pleased for your presence here. The floor here is yours. Pan Benjamin Kunsters jest prezesem niemieckiej firmy wykonawczej. Jednocześnie jest wykładowcą Uniwersytetu w Wiesbaden na Wydziale Architektury Krajobrazu. Zdobywał doświadczenie w firmach budowlanych i wykonawczych w Niemczech i za granicą i przedstawi nam teraz tajniki zarządzania złożonym przedsięwzięciem, jakim jest realizacja obiektu architektury krajobrazu. You need some break for exchange or may I get further? Okay. So. Witam Stanisław, dear audience, dear Piotr. Um, in the preparation for this uh, presentation, I've been thinking about what should I show you about project management. And um, as I did some research on your projects, on your landscape construction education, I found out that this education is really fresh, it's really undogmatic, so I think that's really impressive, so I don't want to show you one kind of project management, just more like a general overview. And um, then I stepped on my plane and I picked up this journal, maybe you know it, a was of business journal, and I read some really interesting sentence in it. Um, there's an interview with H.P. Riavis and um, they say the Polish market is big and healthy. You, you hear me? Okay. So and um, this was my first impression, I think, okay. Should I think about my approach of general project management? And when I arrived here in Warsaw, I saw that there are so many construction sites and they are really good organized. I said, oh, hmm, what should I tell you about project management? You know it already. And then I decided to go more specific on the way we do our project management in respect to our company. So I hope to give you just another point of view, another view to project management, um, more specific on landscape constructing and focus a bit on, on the structure of our company. So I decided to, to divide it in three parts. 
First of all, I'd like to give you a short introduction to our structure, structure of organization, our inner value chain and some specific project. And um, whenever you get some question, just ask anytime. Maybe I forget something or you are interested in something special. So let me start with the structure. Our history is that the company was founded by my father in 1964 with two guys. And not at the place where it's now, he started from his kitchen. And after a few years, he grew this company up to 120 people. Um, in the 80s, he started to um, found to the construction company also a garden center, but this kind of business we don't do anymore. We are close to Düsseldorf, so we are best connected to the Ruhrgebiet. So there are so many cities which are reachable for us, and we work also in a radius around about 120 kilometers. We also work in Netherlands, Belgium, France, Luxembourg, Great Britain. Um, we, had, we have an office in Beijing. From this point, we organize Hong Kong and Shanghai. But our main, main business is around about um, 120 kilometers from Dusseldorf. We are structured in different departments, always with a focus on the customer. The first department, it's the Department of Large-Scale large Construction. These are projects round about from 500,000 euro to 5 million euro. Um, mainly for industrial customers, investors, and a few public customers. We also have a department for roof gardening and renaturation. This is an important topic, it's coming more and more important in Germany. But also private gardening and swimming ponds are really interesting. Garden services and maintenance is also important. More and more people don't want to care for their garden on their own. They want someone who knows how it works. And additionally, indoor gardening, indoor greening and floral art we do. So, We've been thinking about our strengths, what, what makes us unique, um, and we pointed out on three bullet points. One point is our product. We do turnkey-ready gardens. If a customer wants us to do his garden, it's not necessary for him to organize anything else. We, we are around about 120 people. We organize the same number of people in subcontractors, that means if we build a garden and we need some electricians or plumpers, we bring them on our own. So the customer don't have to care for them, we bring them all. So the customer always has one guy to talk to and one guy who gives the guarantee. He don't have to organize all the other people. It's also in large scale contra contractors um, very important. They know they don't have to care for us. The other thing is the way we do things. We are decentralized organized. That means that the guys, the teams on the construction side can decide most things on their own. The people are well educated and it's not necessary, for example, for one of their managers to care for them. Most solutions will be found on the construction side. And of course, we are big networkers. For example, um, we, got, we are close in touch with architects, project developers, also with universities to get new experience, to get new impulse of our work. What can we do? How can we develop projects? Um, what is the trend? Where should we be in the next years? So on all these, leads over to our definition that we, we understand ourselves as 
as a general contractor in green, you will receive any kind of performance in green from us. So, our value chain starts always the same way, independent from the department. First of all, there has to be a customer with a demand, sure. Then he will get in touch with our company and ask, I'm going to explain what's his project. And our calculation department thinks about, okay, who's, who's the best guy that can perform to the customer's wish? And they do some first cost calculations. Um, they're checking the timetable of everyone. And they're also asking, is there any manager of us, any construction manager or team leader who has already a relationship to this customer? So we, um, sustainable relationships are really important for us. And the next step, when we start the negotiations, the construction manager is also embedded in this process. They have um, the first views on the construction side. It's really important to get to the, ex to the construction side and get some impressions about how is it reachable, where it is, what can be done, um, what is needed right there, which technique we can use there. And then it's completely handed over to the manager. And he decides which of his teams he will send there. He's also asking, which of my teams got the best experience? Which of my teams fits to the customer, especially on a personality way? And which team got time enough to do this project? So, now I try to, to spill over all these things to a concrete project. This project is a hospital close to Düsseldorf, the St. August Hospital for Mental Illness. And um, this hospital was restructured by their owners. This is the old house with the old church right there. And um, it needs to be bigger to serve all the, all the people. So they did this project in two steps. The first step were these four houses. And then they decided to connect these four houses with each other and to the main building. And our task was to organize the whole project, the whole surrounding, the whole exterior especially in respect to the other companies which are working there. They're all other handymans. That was really exciting. So we also divided this project in different parts. The first part was this one on this side. And the second part was this side. Now I'm going to show you our plannings. So you see once again, there is the old building and the church. Right there is the first step and here is the connection to the second step. So the first step was really easy to handle because we just started from this corner going up to this side and full stop, easy. In the next year, when the buildings here were started, it was a bit more difficult. And this part we also divided in different sections. So we decided to work from this side, mainly to this side, right over there. <clears throat> and so we based our, um, our basement of machi machines and containers and so on right here. So it's the last step we, we take when we get out. There you see is an entrance. There is the old and the new entrance and a bridge for walkers. So 
Um, this was this is an old graveyard which belongs to the to the monks and the therapy garden. They were not touched. There was, they were still running during our construction. It was really difficult to organize. So that was the reason that we started to build this way, with parking lodges and street, to ensure that the people get to their gardens and get to the graveyard. And the entrance should also work for the handyman. The second step is to make this corner and um, this was really difficult because there, the, the ground had, has different levels. The third step was this area. So because there were many logistics ways for the, for the handymans and their deliverers and suppliers, so we also have to ensure that the logistics of the whole hospital can run during our construction. So, first of all, there's the architect, <laughs> the funny guy, he's always smiling at the work. So, and uh, he's always making jokes, always laughing, and it's quite easy to, to work with him. And there was already one of our construction managers, Thomas Kremer. He knows these architects from other projects. So they fit perfectly together, they know each other. The next step was, that this team leader with, with his uh, team was the best man to do this because he's specific educated in groundwork and in channeling and so on. This was necessary to do there. And all the teams are fully equipped. So they have their own containers with their, with their tools. They have their own machines, vibration plants, diggers, road, um, wheel loaders and so on. So they, they don't need anything else. If they need something else, a special wheel loader or a, or a bigger digger or whatever, they do it on their own. They, they call our suppliers and order these machines for rent. And then they send it back. They don't have to ask us. They don't have to even to ask their managers. They do it on their own. So they're really autark. They also order all the material they need for their, for their construction on their own. They say at which time what should be where. So it's not necessary to talk um, with, for the manager with the suppliers. That means we got special contracts with the suppliers and machine suppliers and also with, um, with the mechanics to serve these people every time on the construction site. For example, if a machine is broken down, we have contracts that the, the um, mechanics have to be there in less than one hour and the machine should be work in less than three hours. So if they don't can guarantee this, they have to bring another machine. I'd like to give you some impressions about the, um, this way once again, this way, yeah, yeah. We had to do some new channelings and also all the media stuff like electricity and internet and so on. First of all, we destructured this old street in less than, I think it's what, less than three days. Then we started with a new channeling system. We started really deep underground. It was 4.5, even 6 meter underground. So, and there are also old media, um, old electricity tubes and so on. It was really difficult to handle this situation. There were no documentation about it, so we have to make a new documentation about all these channels. So you see, these are just one, two, three, three point five underground, but the tube uh, will getting deeper. There we found 
an old line for tubes. No one knew it before, but we have to re, um, reuse it. Here's the guy who knows the best about tubes. So and so it looks like if it's ready. This was um, surface water, rainwater. And then we start layer by layer making the new media dress. So these are special um, tubes, for example, for the electricity, one for internet, and one for in-house phone calls, and s I don't know really what all there happened. So we make a f completely new documentation, also about the gas lines and so on. Every step is documented by photos and writing down, and transported to the plan. So, and then we started to rebuild the whole area layer by layer. And in the end, it should be look like this. Coming to the pond, <laughs> it was um, really interesting. There we work with some of our subcontractors who are specialized in pond systems. We do the most most things, but a few things you, you can't do on your own. For example, um, making, the, making the, the ground of the pond, making the liners. So you need a special guarantee for this in Germany. And it's easier to work with professionals than playing something on your own. Yeah. So we prepared the, the, the first level. So here's, here's a line for making the level and the tubes which are needed for, for the water. This is the first step also for preparing for the concrete. And then we started the basement for the concrete. Maybe you see right here, um, on this side there will be the pond, on this side the level will go up. So, and this was in the winter, really wet winter. Um, we had to protect the, the concrete against the ground, the standing ground on the other side, on the outside. First of all, there is a two component glue, and, there, and then there is a special liner, especially to protect the concrete from frost or something. So every detail had to be kept in mind all the lines you need for the pond system, for, for the pump, for example, and fresh water and um, breakwater and so on. And then again, there comes a special, um, a special liner once again on the outside to protect the pond from roots and so on. So, then we start with the inside. On the inside, there were these concrete I call them puzzle. Um, they were fitting shoes which are, which are placed on the inside of the, of the pond. First, the concrete has to be prepared for the special glue. And then there's another special glue which is mixed up by cement and concrete to fix these shoes. These um, these plastic uh, cubes are to level these special forms. Yeah, they are not every, mainly um, all these all these forms has to be um, yeah let me say perfect, but they are not all perfect. So you have you have to use these these special plates. There are different plates on it. One, two, three, four um, to level these stones. The edges are also prepared. And they are not cutted, they are special formed for this. Even the stone beside or any other stone will be once again tailor-made for this special um, place to close the wall. Here you see, this had to, has been done in one day. There's a special machine to move these stones. 
it's a vacuumizer. So it don't hurt the stone, it's just taken with air pressure. You can fix this machine at the small diggers. Okay, now I'd like to introduce you to this side. You will see that the, the ground level towards the house will go down and the other side will go up. So this, this is the first floor, this is the underground floor and this, this was the area we found. So first of all we have to clean up the whole construction site, that's normal. When, not, when, when a gardener comes to a construction site, especially on a big construction site, he's always the, the nanny, he's always tidying up everything. And this was really much rubbish, so they, they worked nearly one, one week to, to tidy up the whole construction site. Then we also have to reorganize all the under, other handymans. Maybe you can see, this guy is coming from Poland. So when we are on a construction site, Poland's already there. So, um, many, many handymans um, coming from Poland which are, which are still know how it works. Then we start the protection of the house, to protect the house from water and roots and so on. And there are also special custom-made um, solutions necessary. For example, this detail wasn't planned by the architect. We have to develop with him together um, a possibility to get a step out of the house. Then, same way like before, with the vibration machine, we um, build up layer by layer. It's really important to, to, to be really um, carefully by bringing on the layer because um, the weather can, can make erosion. I think you knew this. The last step is bringing on the, the, the ground for the plants. It's really important that the machines work backwards so they don't drive on this ground at last. And the last surface, surface is made by man. So it's uh, really necessary to, to re have a really good uh, ground for the plants. At the end it should be look like this. Here's still the corner open. The, stein, uh, the, the stone has to be made fit for it. So, I hope I can give you, a sm I have to give you a small introduction about how we manage our project, what is important for us. So, like I said, the most important thing for us is that the, the customer value is the, f is the first um, point we look for and therefore we work really strong together with him and finding solutions directly on the construction site. We don't need to ask someone else back. Thank you.